What's up guys? For today's video, I'm back out here continuing work on the John boat. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Santa did me pretty good. So I'm hoping I stay nice and warm out here when we're working on the next part of the boat. I don't know if you guys ever tried one of these before, but it's one of these uh, portable propane heaters. I gotta say, I really like it. Right now, I only have these Benzomatic propane bottles on hand, but I'm gonna be getting some larger ones that fit actually within the unit. So this is gonna make this really portable and pretty compact. You can actually really feel the heat even from all the way over here. Now that the temperature is no longer negative, I'm really excited to get back to work. So in the last couple of videos, I'll have these linked in the top of the screen and also in the description if you wanna catch up. I worked on the framing for the front bench seat as well as the storage compartment. This is all gonna be a self-contained storage unit with a bench seat that lifts up. I'm still not sure how I'm gonna be doing the access hatch and everything like that, but before we get started on that, I wanted to start working on the rod locker. In preparation for this video, I hit up a Menards on my way home the other day, and I'll show you a clip of what I was able to find. All right, so I'm at the hardware store and I'm looking for some pipe to do this rod locker. Originally, I was gonna go with the PVC because it's by far the cheapest, but the weight comparison between the PVC and the ABS is like half. It's only like five bucks more, but it was much lighter. Then I saw, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> then I saw this five foot flex water pipe. This is just ridiculously light. So I'm gonna go with this. And these are those tubes. I am really impressed with how light they are. Now, obviously PVC isn't that heavy to begin with, but like I said, being able to save any amount of weight in your boat, especially when you're building it out as much as I am, I'm really just gonna go for it. I'm gonna put the foam in this area here, cut some holes to fit the tubes, and I'm gonna run these tubes back as far as I need to so there's no risk of the guides of the poles, like these here, catching on the end of the rod holder. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna be using this two inch foam board. I'm gonna get some basic measurements to cut a rough shape for the area then I'm going to try to fit it in place and trim it as needed. I cannot believe how warm this thing is keeping it in here. Like you can see my breath like up here in this area, but it feels like so warm right here. All right, so I'm going to start with uh, 10 inches from top to bottom. I'm actually going to go a little bit taller than that. That way I can wedge it in there real good. There we go. I need to get one more ribbon into this foot right there. All right, so I'm just tying up the bracing down here. Uh, this leg is free floating and once I wedged the foam in here, it kind of lifted this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie the bottom of this vertical support to the floor, which is also tied to the horizontal boat brace. I already have this little piece cut. I just drilled a couple holes in it. Um, I drilled a hole in the bottom of the floor here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my rivet. So that locks that all in place now. This is one and a half inch angle. So I know I'm gonna have to come down at least one and a half inches from the top of this angle here, or else I'm gonna be hitting the angle on the other side of the foam. All right, so if I come down about one and a half inches, giving myself a little bit of leeway, the top of the first set of holes, no higher than that. So I'm just gonna mark that off there. And then now the other thing I have to account for is the brace here. I don't want any of the tubes hitting the brace. Just eyeballing it from this side somewhere on this side of it. So let's just uh, draw this out real quick. So I think that's gonna be more than enough to put a couple rod holders here. Uh, keeping it off the bottom of the floor, obviously, because you want you to have room for your reel. So this area here is where we're gonna fit all four holes. All right, that's gonna be our first one. I'm gonna make sure these are level with one another. Well, that worked a lot better. It cut a perfect plug by just shoving the tube right through it. So that's the way I'm gonna do the other ones. All right, so now we can go ahead and put this back in place. And we can see if it works. I have about 10 feet of tube. I need to make sure I have enough to do this for all four holders and then enough in the front where you put the base of the rod. Now, the other good thing is that if I ever need to change this or if I 
put this all together and say the holes are spaced too close to another, it's foam. You know, this will cut down in no time. I already have a basic template set up. So now I wanna go ahead and get a similar piece cut for the back of the boat. That way I test out the full rod sitting in place to see if it's gonna work or not. So I'm just gonna use the actual pipes to mark off the holes again. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try and set these up in place, install some of the tubes and see if a rod will fit. All right, so I got my bait caster here. Let's go ahead and try and slot it into the, let's go with the bottom slot. There we go, there you got a great idea of how this is gonna look. That's how far the rod tip went back, about right to that support brace, and that's how far I wanna bring the tubes. So I'm gonna be cutting the tubes to go a couple inches past this, make sure there's no chance of it catching, and then a little bit of a tube over here, and that's how it looks. Slide the rod into the hole, and then have it come back into place to hold it. Oh yeah, let's get some more rods in here, see all four of them. Our spinning rod, put that down at the bottom and then say a light tackle up top. All right, so overall, I'm really happy with the progress I made today. The whole concept is gonna work really well. I just need to get my spacing correct. So the other day, I put a poll out on the channel to see what types of videos you guys like the most, and I got a lot of great feedback from that. Basically, I wanted to know if you guys wanted more full, complete build videos where you get something from start to finish. For example, starting the rod locker all the way to finishing it, or if you prefer shorter uh, incremental videos as I'm working on it or when I make major progress on it. And based on the number of votes, it looks like you guys want more videos more often just as I'm working on things. This is what I worked on today. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I think I learned a lot for where I'm gonna go next from here. Once I get the spacing correct, I'll be able to build out the framing and I'll be able to get started on the plywood. So I'm really excited and I'm glad to see that my idea is probably gonna work for this. If you guys found this video helpful or you just enjoyed watching it, don't forget to let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to follow along with the John Boat build and see how the Rod Locker turns out, don't forget to subscribe. If you guys have any ideas on how I can make this Rod Locker better, please let me know in the comments. I'm just coming at it on my own. I think that my idea is sound and I think that this is going to work really cool. I think it's also going to give me a whole second storage section over here. So I'm going to have extra storage here, the Rod Locker. That's going to be a nice seat to sit. I don't know. I think it's coming out pretty good. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. So as I mentioned in the last video, I've been waiting on a delivery to start any of the wood framing and ceiling so I can start doing the foam. It finally got delivered, so I'm excited to show you guys what my idea was. So basically, in order to do EVA foam flooring in the boat, you need a smooth surface to do that. The aluminum floor is great as well as the top of the boat up here, but when I start doing the wood paneling everywhere to kind of close this all up, it's not gonna be that smooth of a surface. Some options you can do for that are to seal it in fiberglass resin, sand it down, seal it again, sand it down, so it's a nice smooth finish. However, another product you can use that already dries smooth from the start is epoxy. So I was looking around for some places that I could get some bulk epoxy, that's also going to work for being in an outdoor environment. The good thing is that everything is going to be covered with the foam, so I don't have to worry too much about UV breakdown, but I was able to find a marine epoxy that did have UV resistance built into it. If you saw another previous video about the retractable transom straps, they were sent to me from Better Boat. So I wanted to check their website to see what else they had because I really like those transom straps, and turns out they sell epoxy. So I reached out to them and asked if they'd be interested in sending me some out to try, and they did. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that. They sent this free of obligation, but I did want to show you guys what it was and give them a big thanks for sending this over for the build. This is going to be a huge help in getting all the wood sealed and prepped for that foam. This is crystal clear. This is used for like pouring on tabletops and stuff like that too. A lot of the times this can be used for waterproofing outdoor furniture and things like that. So I thought this would be a really great idea for something that's going to not only waterproof the wood, but also make it nice and smooth to apply the foam. So again, big thanks to Better Boat for sending this out. So this isn't something I'm gonna be getting to today, but I really wanted to show you guys because I'm super excited about this idea and I think it's gonna work really, really well. If any of you guys have worked with fiberglass resin before, it is horrible, I absolutely hate it. So I'm really hoping that this epoxy is gonna be a little bit more pleasant to work with.